Hello guys, this is Wits Lounge, learning made easy. And in today's video, we're going to be understanding the concept of metamerism, tautomerism, and ring chain isomerism as forms of structural isomerism. So please do like and subscribe so you get notified on other videos that will be popping up. Okay, with that said, let's go on to the next form of isomerism, which is metamerism. Metamerism is a form of isomerism in which non-carbon atoms in a chain are attached to different alkyl groups. So when you have a rearrangement of the alkyl groups attached to non-carbon non atoms in the chain, you refer to that as metamerism. Uh, a, a particular compound where it is most prevalent is in your ethers. So let's consider the ethers. I told you that the functional group of the ethers is oxygen. So when you are naming ethers, it's important to note that there's a general principle too creating metamers and this general principle to creating metamers is quite simple reduce the number of carbon atoms on one side of the alkyl group and then you increase the other side by that same factor so that is to say if you have an eta let's look at an eta um uh, yeah before we get into that i would also like you to note or have this in mind that the only ethers that can exhibit metamerism are ethers that have at least four carbon atoms so which means that something like methoxyethane and methoxymethane cannot exhibit metamerism. So when you have methoxyethane, that is, I'm um, naming how ethers are basically named is the longest chain is referred to as the alkane end. Then the shorter alkyl group with oxygen, they are all called together as alkoxy. So if you notice, this is going to be alkoxy. That if you look at this, this is one carbon atom which is met, so met oxy, and then the alkane is two carbon atom which is ethane. So you have that. So basically, that's how to name it. Consider the longest chain, and then the the shorter alkyl group attached to oxygen, they are called the alkoxy. Now, as I said, once it does not have up to four carbon atom, total carbon atom here is three. It does not exhibit um, metamerism. So, which means that the least possible ether that can exhibit metamerism is ethoxyethane that is c2h5o c2h5 this is ethoxyethane now how do we now create a, a metamer of ethoxyethane very simple i told you that the principle is this reduce the number of carbon atoms on one of the alkyls and increase the other alkyl by that same factor so what we're going to do is we'll remove one carbon from here and add it to this other side and you have a metamer so let's do that together that is going to be removing one from here you have one carbon now if it is one carbon you remember that this is an alkyl group and the general molecular formula for alkyl is cn h2n plus one so how do we find the number of hydrogen since it's one carbon um we're going to put it to this side to get the number of hydrogen to be h two times one plus one and that is going to be h two times one is two plus one is three so how many hydrogens will be here h three okay so we move ahead oxygen then we said that when you minus it from here you add it to this side now adding it to this side we're now going to have c3 how do we find number of hydrogens it's same principle what's number of hydrogen here okay number of hydrogen here is going to be cn h2n plus one so since we have three uh it's going to be h2 times three plus one and that is going to be six plus one which is seven so which means this is going to be h7 now if we are to consider these two first of all is that this particular guy is going to be named okay so his name is ethoxyethane then this other compound is if you notice we have the longer chain is propane remember i told you that this longer chain will take the alkane name while the shorter alkyl group will be attached to oxygen and called together so this longer chain is propane now these two Will be called together as met oxy propane now let's see if they are actually isomers for them to be isomers they have to have the same number of or molecular formula so here we have four carbon atoms 10 hydrogen atoms and one oxygen let's see if it's the same thing here here we have one plus three four carbon atoms three plus seven ten okay this is supposed to be ten sorry ten hydrogen atoms and one oxygen so you find out that eventually they are isomers and how did we get them by metamerism in metamerism the alkyl group on this side and this side um we just change them once you're able to alter them you basically get a metamer now 
as I said, this basic principle in metamerism is take one carbon atom from here, add it to this place, and you have a metamer. Now, if you had something like this, C3H7OCH3, please, this compound does not exist. Why? The longer chain is the that's you can't say what I meant by that is you can't say propoxy methane. The reason you can't say propoxy methane is because the longer chain is not methane, the longer chain is propane. So to remove your confusions you just um rearrange it and then you take the longer side to this side and take the shorter side to this side and it becomes ch3oc3h7 so calling this together this is methoxy propane okay now having said that um that is basically how to exhibit metamerism in ethers just take one um carbon atom from this end and transfer it to the other end and you have a metamer now for your another group of compounds that can exhibit metamerism is the esters and for the esters it's practically the same thing but you know there could be extensions on how to do that in the ester let's consider an ester an ester is an alkanoid so um uh, esters that can exhibit metamerism have to have at least three carbon atoms which means that methyl methanoids cannot exhibit um metamerism however we could consider ethyl methanoid for metamerism and what is ethyl methanoid that is hcoo c2 h5 now to exhibit metamerism is the same thing we just take this this is this is the emphasis this is the emphasis here that's the, the functional group so if we're able to carry one of the carbon atoms and transfer to this other side we can actually get a different metamer so let's look at this if we transfer remove one from here and put it to the other side is good remember you are only affecting the alkyl groups not the functional group so when you move this over you're not going to have c on this other side and when you have c here the hydrogen atoms has to be three then you continue coo and here you have ch3 so this in naming et, uh, es, esters, you actually name this part first before you name this part. And these parts are referred to as the alkyls. While these parts are referred to as the alkanoids. I take it again. Whenever you are naming esters, let me actually rewrite this so it will be clearer and then um, easier to view. Okay, so let's say we had, we are discussing the um, ethyl methanoid. So if you consider naming this, this part is named as the alkyl and it is named first. So this part is named as the alkanoid, alkanoid, and it is named second. So you have that this part comes before this part. So if you are naming this, this is et. Why? Because that's two carbon atoms. So this is ethyl. Then this part has only one carbon atom. So this is methanoid. Okay, so as I was saying, to exhibit metamerism, we simply say, take a carbon atom from this alkyl group and transfer it to the other side. Please, this carbon is not an alkyl group. So just move a methyl group to this other side. And what you're going to have is C. Remember, we found out how to do that. Remember, CnH2n plus 1. So since we have one carbon moved to the other side, it's now going to be CH3. And then we continue on with our COO. And then finally, because we removed one from here, what is going to be remaining here is CH3. Now, if we name this, this is now going to be referred to as, remember, this is for this guy. So to name this guy, this is named first. This is methyl. And this is ethanoid. But remember, in the naming, this comes first, this comes second. So when you are naming it together, this is now going to be methyl ethanoid so you notice that ethyl methanoid is different from methyl ethanoid and then these two are isomers if we count the number of carbon atoms in ethyl ethanoid what you are going to have is three carbon atoms hydrogen would be six and the oxygen would be two if you do the same thing here what you're going to have if you check here this is going to be three carbon atoms hydrogen is still six and oxygen is two so they are metamers so have that in mind you just move one carbon or methyl group to the other side and you have a metamer that's that so the two major compounds that can exhibit metamerism are your um alkanoids which is the esters and the ethers you try for um let's say i give you uh methoxy methoxy uh methoxy pentane methoxy pentane so the structure is going to be 
CH3, oxygen, and then pentane is C5H11. Okay, so you tell me the number of isomers you were able to derive from this and put it out in the comment section. Response will be given if necessary. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are done with metamerism and would like to get into the next form of structural isomerism. So the next form of isomerism we are going to be considering is tautomerism. And what is tautomerism? Tautomerism is a form of isomerism in which the position of protons and electrons change in the chain. Now, when I say position of protons and electrons, what I want you to understand is this. When I refer to a proton, I'm looking at a hydrogen atom. And then when I'm referring to the electron, I'm considering a multiple bond. So when I have more than one bond and I change the position of one of the bonds to another place, what I actually did is tautomerism. So when I change the position of one of the bonds in the multiple bonds and change the position of hydrogen, two of them simultaneously, when you're changing that of hydrogen and that of the bond, what you are actually exhibiting is tautomerism. Now, it is prevalently found in alkenols. Yes, alkenols are unsaturated alkanols. So let's consider that. Imagine I have an alkenol, for instance. So let's try something else. Another example is propene 2 all. So we have propene 2 all is C2 all, meaning that the hydroxyl is on the second carbon. You have one, two, the remaining here is going to be two hydrogen. Here you have one, two, three, one, two, three for its field. So here you have CH3. Okay, remember I said you are going to change the position of this particular extra bond and put it to the carbon atom that has oxygen. This carbon atom is the one that has oxygen. So you change it, put it here and remove this hydrogen and then put it here. That's you exchange their positions. You take this from here, put it here and take hydrogen from here and put it here. Okay, with that said, we are going to have a new compound. And what is the compound going to be? Remember, CH, instead of 2, remember, we took the hydrogen from here and attached it to this, which is going to be 3. And then took the double bond and put it just between oxygen and carbon. And then we have this. The name of this compound is propanol. While this is propene 2 all. So if you look at the number of carbon atoms here, the number of carbon atoms is c3 the number of hydrogen atoms is h6 and we have how many oxygen just one same thing happens here c3 h6 o and that is what we refer to as tautomerism i hope this has been helpful then we go finally to the next one which is ring chain isomerism now in ring chain isomerism you are looking at um converting a particular cyclo um hydrocarbon or cyclo organic compound to a straight chain organic compound the two major compounds that exhibit ring chain isomerism are your alkenes and cyclo alkenes they both exhibit um the ring chain isomerism which is to say that when you count the number of carbon atoms in alkenes and the number of hydrogen atoms or you consider the molecular formula of alkenes is exactly the same thing as that of a corresponding cyclo alkene let's see that imagine for instance we have propene propene has three carbon atoms three carbon atoms the double bond uh, this is going to be h2 this is going to be h no not h2 just h and this is going to be h3 this is propene then we consider a corresponding cyclo alkene which is prop cyclopropane so if we put the hydrogen atom this is h h this is h h this is h H. So let's count. What are the total number of carbon atoms here? This is propene, which has the chemical formula of C3H6. This is cyclopropane, which has the chemical formula of C3H6. So you have that um, ring chain isomerism is exhibited by alkenes and corresponding cycloalkenes. You have that. And that's the end of the study on structural isomerism. Hope you've learned a lot. Thank you very much. This is Witsnound, learning made.